The footage which you are seeing on your screen is either found footage or documentary footage of bioluminescent life forms which exist on planet Earth. I first became truly interested in bioluminescence on a trip which I took around Southeast Asia in the summer of last year. There, I didn't come into a lot of contact with bioluminescence in terms of volume, however, I was very fortunate to be able to come across a single firefly when I was staying in a cabin in Kofenyen, and I also came across a single plankton, or zooplankton, which was glowing a very interesting light blue colour. It was a single plankton that we found alone on a beach, again, in Kofenyen. I felt very fortunate to be able to see these life forms, and the way that they glow is extremely fascinating. I won't go into the details too much, but fast forwarding to later in 2019, I would come to study Throop Village, which is a small little village in Bournemouth, by the River Stour, which I was studying as part of my Masters of Architecture work, where we study architecture, the landscape, and the relationship between these two things. During my time studying Throop, I would come to learn that glowworms used to live in the grasslands and the woodlands of the Stour Valley nature area. It was a few decades ago, however, Glowworms did exist along the sides of paths, especially because these small paths which you could walk down were rather quiet and not very filled with light pollution at all. When one would walk down these paths, they would see glowworms illuminate the grassy areas there. They would see little specks of green lights, and these green lights would be used by the female glowworm to attract male glowworms during mating season. Glowworms can still be found in the United Kingdom, however, their populations have been declining rather rapidly. In fact, it is believed from studies that their population has declined around 70 to 75 percent over the last 20 years. So, what we know as a common glowworm may not be so common anymore. There are a few people who are lucky enough to have seen these glowworms. In fact, I am not one of those. I have never met one of these glowworms in person. As I said before, I've seen the firefly and I've seen the plankton. However, I've never actually come across a glowworm in the wild. A few of my friends have, and plenty of the older generations will have before there was so much light pollution in our towns and villages. So ultimately, I am trying to raise awareness of the issue of the rapid decline in glowworm populations. To do this, I'm taking on the possibility of rearing and breeding glowworms. Now, from the people that I have spoken to, it seems that rearing glowworms is certainly not a common thing at all. It is in fact a very rare thing. Some cursory research that a friend of mine has done found that the last time it may have been officially recorded was in 1973, and the recording would have happened over a three-year period, as this is a life cycle of the common glowworm. So it is my aim in these videos to show you how I plan to capture the glowworms and to breed them and then to ultimately show them to people in Bournemouth at the Arts by the Sea Festival this year. Now of course we are talking about this in 2020 and I'm sure many of you will be aware of the current, or in the past for some of you, global viral pandemic of the coronavirus. So hopefully the Arts by the Sea Festival, hosted in Bournemouth Gardens, will still be able to go ahead. However, we don't know for sure that this is going to happen. Nevertheless, this doesn't stop me from researching the glowworm, from attempting to rear and breed them, and showing you my journey. Okay, so I'm starting by getting a small container. In this case, it's a uh, fish tank, uh, just an empty fish tank and uh, I'm going to be cleaning it at first, and then this fish tank is going to become a small-scale sort of a peat bog or a heath, uh, which I can use to keep moss or lichen, uh, peat especially for a sort of substrate. And uh, with that, it will be the first step to be able to house the snails, which I'm going to be keeping as food. But the next thing for now will be to head out to Turbury Common tomorrow, and uh, go digging up the, uh, just a small, very small amount of the, uh, the sort of bog or the wet heath there. Okay, so I've got to go to a hardware store now to pick up a few things before I go to Turbury Common. 
Um, don't have much space on my in the back of my motorbike, but I've got enough space for a bucket so far at least. Just got to get a few other things, uh, and then I'll be ready to head to the peatland. So I found an entrance to Turbury Common. So we're going to have a walk through here. We'll take a look at the sign over there, see if it gives any clues as to where the wet heathland could be. And then I suppose we'll do some digging. Looking at the sign, we've got some wet heath in the darker green. So we'll be heading towards those areas. We're currently at the top. So according to my friend Leo here, who's joining us, Hello. we're going to head down that way towards the left. Okay, so I've been told that Turbury Common is a great area to find wet heathland, which is exactly the kind of material that we need to start rearing the glowworms and to keep the rarer snails that the glowworms feed on uh, in a contained space where they can actually survive. So as I already pointed out on the map, we have the wet heath which we're going to be aiming for in the warm weather. Hopefully it won't be too dry. All right. Got all, got all the stuff here, let's go. Hengsbury Head, I was thinking of going there to find wet heath, but um, it turns out um, it goes from dry heath to salt marsh. Oh, really? So it's the wrong like kind of material. You need to go to the new forest. This was something I was worried about, was that all of the wetland was just gonna completely There'll be some peat which has absorbed a lot of water, hopefully. It takes the water stays in the peat moss a very long time. Yes, it's proving that everything is very spiky and very, very dry. Alright, yeah, think you can get in? We'll see. I mean, I'm already yeah, scratched up enough, fish. so. Leo, the, uh, the ecologist genius man. <laughs> yeah, I the, see reeds, I see tall long grass. It does, it looks quite a lot wetter over there. Right, so it's very boggy, yeah. but I don't want to just dig it up if it's like grassy bog. Yes, it is definitely wetland. But we can definitely see this is very moist, very springy. I'm not sure what that stuff is. So I'll grab a sample of it. Ooh, very watery. Even in the amount of sun that we've had in Bournemouth and Pool, it still managed to collect and hold a lot of water. Aha! You can already see, yes, you can already see this starting to fill it with water quite a lot. 